Hello, I'm Steve Rodriguez. I'm an early founder of Mozart Productions and was the technical director for 15 years. I would do what I would call down and dirty theater. We were always on a small budget and had to get it set up in a short time, but I made the most of it. I will go through the thought processes of designing a set and then creating it with limited resources. Before we begin, the theater you will be performing in is very important to what you can do. For Mozart, we always had to keep in mind all the different facilities we were using. Sometimes we were on a small 12-foot triangle in a corner of a small church, and other times we were in a full-size theater. I always designed a set for the smallest venue we had because it was always easier to add a flatter or two to make it bigger, but it's much harder to go the other direction and still be sure to get what is necessary for the show. Let's talk about the set. First of all, you need to determine what is needed for a play. After receiving the script, I would read it and determine the location or locations, entrances and exits, windows, lights, special effects, and other things that would affect the tech. Some scripts have a set design at the back, but don't always feel like you need to do what they do exactly. Oftentimes they have the use of flies, revolving stages, act curtains, and large spaces. Find what you actually need and work out from there. If you are able to see other people do the show, go and see it, especially if they are in tight spaces. See what they did well. See what they didn't do well. Even if it's not the same show, you may find something or some technique to use. Next, we would have a production meeting with the producers, directors, and staff to create the vision for the show. Find out what is needed and or wanted, anything needed to be changed, determine was it what is expected of the set, the time frames, the functional pieces, special effects, and so forth. I would attend these meetings with rudimentary drawings, lots of ideas, and ready to conceptualize what others are bringing to the table. It is lovely if the choreographer wants you to fly Mary Poppins and have Bert dance on the proscenium, but if you are in a small country church, that will not likely be possible, and you need to voice those restrictions, not to mention financial implications, immediately. After the production meeting, I would then create a full design and get it approved by the director and staff. Then I would begin going through our things to make it happen. We always had flats, door flats, window flats, platforms, and steps so that we could mix and match and rearrange as was required for each show. It was always fun pulling the items from storage and seeing the remnants and layers of paint from past shows and try to remember what show it was from. I find scenes happening outdoors to be the hardest because the scenery and creating things artificially that already grow naturally. It is hard to make them look real. Also, you are dealing with weather like snow, rain, and wind, not to mention the occasional avalanche, as in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. If you are dealing with a show with multiple locations, the simpler you can do the scene changes, the better. Also, be sure you have a good crew that can be on top of things. The best stage crews I've had are the ones that choreograph themselves to create a smooth transition between scenes. It makes it a pleasure to watch the scene changes, which can sometimes be distracting and destroy the pacing of the show. As far as research, you need to know the time period. If it's modern, things tend to be pretty simple to do. However, if it's a period piece, items can be pretty difficult to find, expensive to purchase, or hard to make. Look deeply into a time period. If you are needing a potbelly stove, 
you will discover that you will only find modern looking ones, that they are scarce, they are extremely heavy, and they are expensive. And to make a fake one will take a lot of time to look good. The things I like about technical directing is the creativity that can go into it, the thought processes of how to create the set in real life, and the audience's reaction to it when they first see it. Feel free to think outside the box. For instance, in Bye Bye Birdie, we had a lot of locations, so I did a kind of 60s background with colored frames, and by using particular set pieces and unique lighting, we created the different locations. During all of this, we have to keep in mind that we are in different locations, different stage sizes, and have to get the basics of the set up in only a few hours. Usually, I arrive at 8 or 9 in the morning and work until 3 or 4 in the afternoon before the cast needs to rehearse. Make sure you can get the basic bones of the set up and the basic audio. I usually didn't start lighting until the next day. After the basics, are all in all these areas are up you can go back and fill in the rest some shows I would be painting the last few pieces of set as the audience is entering the auditorium of course that is not ideal but you often do what you have to do sound Sound design is an interesting subject and hard to articulate without actually experiencing it. For some shows, you will simply need to have an even, comfortable sound from the mics, sound effects, music, and when in use, an orchestra. Again, you can be creative depending upon what you have available. When I saw Jekyll and Hyde in Houston before it went to Broadway, they were able to create the illusion that Hyde was walking around the auditorium. It felt like he was right behind you, practically breathing down your neck at times. When we did Susical, we heightened the reverb and added some speakers to the back of the auditorium to enhance the echo of JoJo's Yop, so it sounded like it was encircling the auditorium. Lighting. We are very limited on lighting because of the lack of electrical power at our facilities. With the dawn of LEDs, we have been able to add more, but as of yet, LEDs for a stage wash is either very expensive or not genuinely adequate. We use two trees with four lights each. For a basic wash, those lights will be par cans or fresnels, but if I need specific areas lit, I will use ellipsoidals. Each area needs to be lit by at least two separate lights, which means we can only have four different areas with our current lighting. Three lights, two from front and one from the back, for each area is optimal, but usually we're not able to do that. Special lighting can be added, and because they are usually LED, we don't have an electrical problem with any of the specialty lighting. We use special lighting for alcoves, fires, specific spots, wall sconces, snow, rain, and various other effects. Finally, take care of yourself and your crew. Tech is one of those areas that everyone expects everything when they want it, but usually goes unappreciated. Most of the cast and even directors do not realize that you are there for hours before everyone else and working later than anyone. What this means is that you need to take care of yourself and your crew. Be sure to take a break and to eat and get hydrated. Treats or bringing dinner for your crew goes a long way to boosting morale. Also, get some sleep. If you need to do an all-nighter, give yourself permission to take the next morning off. Sleep is important. It will put you in a better mood and you actually will get more done when you are rested. As a final note, one of the things I always tell my techies is you know you're doing your job if no one notices you. Sound and lighting especially are always taken for granted and goes unnoticed until something goes wrong. Then everyone notices. So in other words, if no one says anything to you after a show, take that as one of the highest compliments. You did a job well done.